Carl DeMaio, News Radio 600 Kogo, and uh, a few years ago, Prop 57 was on the ballot, and I warned you we should vote no because it basically allows for the early release of people in prison, uh, and we are already a state that's gone really light on crime. Prop 47, which is in the same wicked web of Prop 57, allows for the reclassification of uh, felonies into misdemeanors, and now we got bail that's been basically eliminated. How are people going to uh, ensure that criminals come back to court to uh, face their uh, their trials? Uh, all sorts of problems. Uh, but Prop 57, uh, the data is now piling up that it's been a pretty bad move for California. Uh, and joining me on the DeMau Report to, to discuss it is Michelle Hannessy. She's president of the Association of Los Angeles Deputy District Attorneys. Michelle, thanks for stopping by. My pleasure. So we all warned uh, voters, we warned politicians, don't do Prop 57. They passed it. It allows people to uh, be released from prison. Um, and uh, what are we seeing in terms of actual implementation thus far? Well, uh, thus far, and I, and I have an ongoing Public Records Act request for releases, the people who are being released are not all, surprisingly, nonviolent. Some of them have committed quite violent offenses, and I'm also, previous to this recent Edwards opinion, have been seeing the release of strikers early. Um, so some people are getting out who are not really what the public thought the initiative was about. But I remember Jerry Brown specifically saying that if uh, the individual were violent, that this would not apply to them. What happened? Well, it was badly written. It was very badly written because it said only nonviolent offenders, but it never defined who was nonviolent. And that left this legal construction sort of a void, if you will. And everyone who practices law understands when there is a void, the courts will look to any existing legal definition. And there was a list of violent offenses, which was never intended to encompass every possible violent offense. It had, a, it had a very different purpose. But as we suspected, in the absence of a definition of nonviolent, what was nonviolent simply became anything that wasn't on that very short violent felony list. So do you think this was done by design? Uh, and if so, what is the real goal here? Oh, it's very clear that our governor and our legislature has a goal of complete de-incarceration. And that was really played out in the most recent legislative cycle. Because remember, back when we had Prop 47, they're like, we shouldn't be incarcerating drug offenders. Drug offenders need programs. Don't put them in prison. And the public agreed. They're like, all right, that makes sense. And then we didn't want to put people in prison for petty theft, even if they did it again and again and again. And the public bought that and they said, all right. And everyone kept saying, we're not talking about murderers. We're talking about low-level offenders. And then we just want to let nonviolent offenders out of prison early, not the violent people, just the nonviolent people. And the public bought that. And now what we saw this legislative session are bills that are sitting on the governor's desk that he lobbied for, that he's probably going to sign, that are going to let murderers out of prison. And they always said, no, just the nonviolent offenders, not the murderers. Now they're actively working on a bill that's sitting on the governor's desk that will let murderers out of prison. Okay, so what can we do about this? I mean, this is, uh, it was presented to voters. They were misled. Um, it's not having a good impact. We are seeing actual violent offenders being released. Uh, what can we do? There's a couple of things you can do. There is a ballot initiative that qualified, unfortunately, not for this election, but for the 2020 election called the Reducing Crime and Keeping California Safe Act. And that will redefine a bunch of crimes as violent that would otherwise and are now eligible for early release. It would allow higher punishment for repeat, repeat theft offenders. It would do a couple of things. The other thing that I cannot stress enough is actually effective is for people to call their legislators and tell them what they want. Say, I want you to vote for this. I want you to vote against this. Legislators have a great deal of character right up until they get a bunch of calls from their constituents and are afraid they're going to get voted out of office. Well, obviously, 2020 is uh, a ways off. That's two years. And, uh, you know, the, the fix to Prop 47, or at least a partial fix, because I don't think even the initiative that we took to the streets uh, goes far enough, but it's a start, okay? Uh, it, it not only helps fix some of the problems with Prop 47, but helps fix some of these problems with 57. Um, that's two years from now. Are we going to likely see an uptick in crime uh, in each of the next two years? 
Well, I think that we are going to see an uptick in crime, um, especially now that they're actually releasing violent offenders. And there was a UCI study that critiqued Prop 47 and said it's really not causing crime to go up except theft. And you're like, but wait, that's the only crime it changed the punishment for. So actually it had an effect. But they also noted in the study it is not reduced in a reduction in prison incarceration costs. And recidivism, recidivism rates in California remain very high. So the premise is you're supposed to give people rehabilitation, get them rehabilitated, but it's not working. They're not getting rehabilitated. They're committing more crimes. And then they get out there and uh, uh, many of these individuals that do have uh, criminal records end up adding to the homeless population. Um, And so all these issues that we're seeing out there, not just the crime, but the the degradation of our streets in terms of uh, folks that are out there in L.A., in Orange County, in San Diego – um, all these issues are all interrelated, and yet they keep doing it. So I, I have to ask again, what is their true goal? I mean, do they really have a philosophy that we're being too hard on criminals? I, I don't think they want us to punish criminals at all in Sacramento. They're in this utopian fantasy that if you just uh, you know have a few kind words with someone, they're going to change their game plan and stop being a criminal. Those of us in the criminal justice system know that it doesn't work that way. Um, and I, I, as you said, we're seeing the results of it now. There's been no study done, but everyone can see that homelessness is up. Um, and that has to be partially attributable to the fact that all these drug users are now free to continue to use drugs, do whatever they want, and no one's pushing them to enter programs. There's no incentive for them to enter a program. Yeah, and we don't have the, the, the stick that we need to kind of force them into a program for substance abuse or mental health treatment. Hey, we got to go. We appreciate you you uh, uh, ringing the bell on this, and uh, uh, we got to work hard for 2020 to fix this. Um, I just worry about the number of people who will be hurt between now and then. That's um, Michelle Hennessy, president of the Association of Los Angeles and Deputy District Attorneys. Coming up, our daily update on the Yes on Prop 6 gas tax repeal campaign.